Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to discuss what plagues us all in ranked on Apex Legends. So if you guys like this concept, we can do some videos and really in-depth guides on ranking. So leave a like if you like that. We can start with bronze to silver, silver to gold, gold to ply and so forth. So let me know. So honestly, today's discussion applies when you're having a bad day aiming, positioning, the works. So now, let's, let's paint the picture, let's paint the story. You're starting up your game. You launch, and you get in. You squat up with your boys and girls, and then you queue in, the vibes are high, and you die off drop. You 50-50. You keep losing fights. You get third partied. You don't get good loot. It becomes just an endless cycle of losing and losing and losing. And it's hard to keep those good vibes, right? And it's hard to stay positive. What do you do? So that's today's video. And I'm gonna cover what happened when I ran into a bad day uh, with Poner and Parzilla. And you know, we're very logical people. We're really good dudes, but and, and, and it can happen to anybody. You've seen it happen with your most popular content creators, your most favorite people. Everyone runs into a bad day. So let's discuss what are the three options that you can do when you're running into a bad day. Number one, you can change up the tactics as a group, meaning changing landing spots, communication, play more aggressive, play less aggressive, change it up. Change it up, change it up, change it up. Now you take a step back for number two. Take a step back and walk away and then recoup. Number three, analyze your footage like we're gonna do in this video. So this is gonna be a great video because we're gonna analyze the footage, kind of see what went right, what went wrong. We're gonna go through it. You know, the way I'm gonna approach it, the audio is gonna change. I'm just gonna record my desktop and we're gonna pull up the videos as if you're literally sitting next to me and I was sharing my screen with you and I was like, hey, look at this, man. So let's go through a bad day, what we did wrong and hopefully this helps you compare to your own experience. Anyone in the comments, leave a comment, let us know what you saw. We're all in this together. So let's begin analyzing the gaming footage and I'll keep this brief from various rounds and we're gonna break it down. Okay, so now we're segueing. We're gonna look at each individual round one by one. I'm gonna treat this as if you're sitting next to me. It's gonna be raw, it's gonna be uncut. I apologize if I stutter, if I stammer. I'm really gonna treat this as if you're sitting next to me, we're having a conversation, we're breaking down the gameplay. So I normally do this with my team after we do ALGS and we break down our gameplay, or if I have a really bad day in ranked, or a really bad day warming up, and so forth. So let us begin with the first round. And again, I'm just going to pull up the video file and look at this. Hopefully I don't say anything too awful. I'll keep the volume down because really the focus of this and keep in mind, I play stretch res, so it's going to look a little wonky. This is just a warm up round. This, this is what I recommend anybody and everybody do when you're first starting out. And I may cut because I think I have the hiccups. So I may have to cut every once in a while here and there. But nonetheless, let's talk this through. You know, you, you get your warm up round. You, you, you get this in before you go into ranked. The, the reason why you do this is obviously you want to make sure your aim is on point, make sure that you're able to fry people. So this, this was good. This is honestly a pretty good start. You get the bunny hops going, as you can see here. So the biggest advice that I can really share here, did I get a kill? I think the guy just died his own, to be honest. And then we're just rotating in. This this is just warm up round. This is just getting getting warmed up and understanding what you're doing, how you're playing, getting the groove movement. You can do this in the test range. Um, you can do this in other various aspects. Like this kind of threw me off. I killed two people here. My po my aim was actually on point for this. Let, let's let's get past this. Warm up. Warm up. Warm up. Warm up. Let's move on. Sorry for for staying here too long. Okay. So this is the first round of the day. Let's see how this went. I'm mostly going to focus at the start and also the ending. So we decided to obviously land estates. It's not a bet. We were talking about a ranking, blah, blah, blah. We're looking, we, we always look when we're dropping. We're always looking to see where, where teams are. I'm only gonna bring in the comms so it doesn't muddle so you can hear me specifically as we're talking to this. If we need to go back and listen to comms, and we'll listen to comms. So obviously we drop, we all split up a little bit here, which is kind of a good thing and a bad thing. I think we died pretty much. Let's see if we died off for the rip. No, it's about five minutes long. Let's see how this goes. Got our loot. Looks like we're uncontested. We hit the beacon. Everything's fine here. So let's figure out what went wrong. Okay, so it looks like we pushed up. We just decided to go to the waterfall, which the audio was a little rough here. We're scanning out. We feel confident. I think we got one knock. We see a bunch of teams. We have height, so we're confident up here, right? This doesn't seem bad, but I, I mean, this only six minutes. So yeah, we got one knock here, so that's good. We decide not to chase. We got the assist here. What went wrong? Let's keep going. So we decided to rotate around because we knew there's a bunch of teams around us. We wanted to rotate big this way. 
or go the other way over here. We were kind of unsure. We we're just, you know, the biggest thing in this map now looking at it is probably the question of, do we understand our rotations? Do we get them, right? So we see this team here, laser them, uh, kind of, kind of pepper them a little bit. This, I think this was a really good team, if I'm not mistaken, that we ran into. It's kind of unfortunate. Kind of screwed up a little bit. Was it? Let's see here. I don't really know. So we really got fried. Let's let's go back here. Let, let's figure out what happened. We, I got the initial damage on, which felt like we got them off guard. 47, they had blue. We're pushing this. We're on equal footing. We got some entry damage. It looks like they're getting shot from another angle. This other team looks like they backed out. I scanned. I got fried. You know, honestly, what I should have done here, when I look at this, I scanned out in the open. I, I made too much of the assumption that the enemy was in here. I just felt, yeah, I saw shots there. So I made the mistake of just focusing too much here. And then before I knew it, I got caught out of position. I should have waited at an angle safer to scan because this pretty much caught me off guard. And Pars was already getting fried in his 1v1. And so he went down. Now we're looking at a 3v2 situation, which is a little rough. So I land my shot. If I landed that, I don't even know if that would have made much of a difference. I was pretty much dead. But the peaking here... I did a video on the art of the double peak. This isn't this this is good peaking. What looking back on what I did wrong here is I should have scanned a little bit further up. Pars probably should have waited to ape for information, and maybe our team just needs to get the full scope of information before we decide to full on commit. I mean that's probably the only thing I can really think of. I don't really know what I think Poner just got hit in the crossfire in the back, unfortunately. And then we got mopped up relatively quickly. So that's unfortunate. This is already a bad day. This is this is losing RP. We've already lost RP, right? That's a one off the rip. Lost about 38 points, rough. So this is obviously like a six minute round. We land, it looks like we're uncontested. We probably hit beacon, right? Yeah, we did. We hit beacon and we rotated. We hear third party. We're like, we're gonna ape this right away. I th Yeah, I got a kill right here as well. I shot one guy and got a kill. I was like, this is a good start. This guy is backing up and retreating. We don't have much information. So the biggest issue that it seems like our team is having on Olympus compared to World's Edge, we know where to rotate and where to go to World's Edge to play for position. It seems like we struggle a little bit on where to go and where to rotate. I think Poner and Parzilla would definitely agree on that looking at this. And this is me looking at this from a raw perspective now. We just, we hesitated quite a bit on this and then there's just nobody here, fine. Now, I think this is where we made our mistake here. And, and maybe I, I should always speak up a lot more in this scenario. We, what happened is we started pushing this team. We really should never push a team on height. No matter how cracked they are or how good we think that we are. If, we're, if we have an open field in front of us, this just isn't good. Even if we get a knock here, are we able to really capitalize on it? You would have to literally just laser and fry them down. And unfortunately, that just doesn't happen. And we start getting peppered. And we do actually call here to rotate and back up, which we do. So we rotate and back up, right? And this may be a lot longer of a video because we're really going to break down a bad day on Apex Legends. So here I decided to ult, trying to get some firefight back. We're really pinned. I mean, we can keep running, and I believe we do. Yep, we, we rotate out. We do a full rotation out. We made a call because we're just pinned in a box and we can't be pinned in a box like that. We have to take different angles. So fair enough. So now as we're rotating, I think we hear another team fight over here and we decide to engage on this because we, we believe we have a, a more prime of an opportunity. So let's find out what went wrong here. Because honestly, everything up to this point necessarily wasn't wrong. We rotated out when we needed to. And here we are. So we have a team over here. We scan them. He's going for the aggressive port so we can get into the building. We decided to take his port up top. He got fried, unfortunately. I think this is. I think that this came down to the port, and now we're in three v two. But we're just trying to make a play and become or to get aggro. And so now we're in a three v two situation. This this is a little rough, and I was just kind of going for a play, and it really honestly didn't work. I knew that we needed to yellow, and we couldn't be caught on a position inside, and it just failed on my part. It was kind of doomed once the port kind of went wrong. And I think, actually, I remember Pars actually owned up to it. I think there's something great that you can do with any squad is just own up to when you make mistakes. Once the mistakes happened, honestly, Pwner and I should have just held position. I just kind of went for a, I guess you can call it a Hail Mary, and just kind of said, you know what, let's see what we can do. Maybe I can get lucky and get some damage. 
which I try and I was like, I went up. I could have, if I landed my shots there, perhaps I could have changed the game. I didn't. I land my shots kind of here, but then run out of ammo, and then boom, I'm dead. And uh, Poner was beasting it up, and he did really, really well later here, and then unfortunately we died. So another 38 points lost. So we still have the other four rounds we lost 38 points, so... If you really look at it, let's just say on average we lost 38 points. He times up by six. You're looking at a 228 RP loss. So it's not as bad as like a thousand, but it still kind of sucks when you're when you're trying to farm, right? Okay, this is another unfortunate. We we didn't contest here. We were fine. Everything's good. You know what's weird is that this day we didn't get contested. We've had other days where we just kept 50 50 and losing, but today I don't think we really did that. So we moved around. The story is that we rotated we moved around and we did what we we're supposed to everything's great right we hit the beacon and we're trying to figure out a rotation we rotate this way because sometimes we got hit by the choke point over here so we tried a different tactic and we're trying to rotate long ways because we were tired of getting in the choke point and just dying i think this one is my fault a hundred percent i would blame myself because i I'm not, I'm not supposed to be the shot caller i'm not the wraith and i put myself out of position i didn't die right away but i was like they're over here and i you know the reason why is i see one downed and I was like, we can we can push on this, we can ape on it. And unfortunately, we just didn't really capitalize on it. I, I, I kind of figured the team would be in a little bit more of a rough spot. So I really go on a full send it. This really sucked. Immediately, I was already cracked. And it was within a few seconds there. Which is why I really should, should have been taking this angle right here. Instead of just yellowing and pushing in. I just figured the team would be a lot more caught off guard. I already acquired and knew that he was there. And I was zoomed in immediately. Either they got the heads up that we were coming and he was holding us off or I should have just I honestly should have held the angle to the left I got cracked here that that's a mistake So you can really look at your gameplay and know that and this is technically this has happened to me twice I just need to pay more attention to my surroundings now I'm using cover the way I should but it's a little too late because now we're pinched in two different areas Pars does a fantastic port here and he steals both of us and we rotate back so this is this was good um, We got par uh Poner, and now we're literally held. You know the crazy part here is that this was only a few seconds where everything went wrong. And keep in mind, I mean, this can happen. We shot; they were ready for us. We had to rotate out. We're in an open field. Should we have taken this open field battle? The answer most likely is no. We should have focused on the zone. The zone is already closing. This is going to end up a mess. And looking at this now, after a few days and coming back to it, we really should not have taken this fight. But it was my fault for instigating and being too confident on the comms and saying like, oh, let's do this, let's do this. So this is my fault. And that's one other team pushing. There's two teams over there. There's one sh team fighting from a distance. And what you're about to see, what's an even bigger mess, is another team coming over here on the left right here in just a hot second. So we're, we're completely pinched. Pars is looking for an opening. Unfortunately, he literally calls out that he get fought another team over here. And we're just hard pinched by four different teams. This is really unfortunate when the overall goal would have been ignore it. Just keep pushing to the zone. We're going to get kills. There's still 13 squads. We're going to be fine on RP. This is my fault though. I take blame for this. Looking at it, just I need to cut my corners better. And to begin with, that wasn't a fight to take, even if I thought they're being third partied. Because the zone is closing. I guess the best note you can take here is that if ever the zone is closing just go to zone there's really no reason to instigate a fight here because everybody else who is positioned in zone hearing that the third party is going to push so we're fighting here we're holding off we're holding off best we can i mean we make a whole lot of space out of nothing though to be fair we really do we do the best we can with what we got do a little damage there that's not bad it's okay you know hopefully in the background i'm gonna play i'll play some music so then you know can vibe it chill. So 54 seconds left on this. Let's skip ahead. We're literally just pinched here. We have nowhere to go. If we go left, we're dead. If we go in the open field, we're dead. If we're going to the right, we're dead. So this is just hold out as long as we possibly can and not die. And this team decides to finally ape. Got a little bit of intro damage there. We knock it. Actually, this was really well played by Poner and I by using the bubble going in and out. Because I think we finish it while well, another team was shooting at them. But that's not bad at all. I think that I think this was as best as we could have done. The starting point when we go back was the issue of this round. So lost another 38 RP. GG's. It's rough. Now let's look at round four. This was clearly a 50-50 because this barely lasted a minute. With already having a bit of a rough round. 
we really should have kept not 50 50 and just rotating into zone and being smart with our pushes. But we push here and we see a team heart sticking and we decide to heart stick and fight. Go into the building, grab myself a gun, scan. Oh, this is, and I, 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 sh I should, this is where I, I need to think. Instead of just going in and trying to help, I should have looted better and I should have got better positioning. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, which means I'm flying from, or I'm fighting from a lower position. And fighting from a lower position when they have a better, smaller hitbox is always rough. I should have immediately run up to the stairs. I think I hit the bins for armor and I get lucky. Yeah, I get armor and I say, okay, I should have just went right for the stairs right after. I decide to go right. Which is probably, this was not the right call to be honest, because now they have height on me. And I think I get scanned from that angle. And I should have just pushed up. I do a little damage, I crack him, but this other guy pushes up and then I die. I realistically, looking at this now, is I literally, once I got the armor yellowed and pushed up, because I would have had an angle and been able to do something. So I could reconvene with Poner and give him a better opportunity to do something. Because he almost clutched this out, honestly. I don't know, did I record it? I guess once I died, I stopped recording. Oh, it was a nice wig. What a boss, dude. He he came in. He came in clutch. Shout out to nice wig. He's a good guy. Also, uh, a Prezi. Hopefully, I'm not mispronouncing his name. Good squad, though. So, it did some damage. It really came into me not pushing in right here, taking better position, because all I did was get caught out in the open. I needed to take an angle and play a little more patiently, because I he was already dead before I pushed up was the reality of the situation. He was already a lost cause, like right here. He was already a lost cause. I needed to reposition to get the best spot possible for me. And the same thing with uh, with Poner. And I think he was already doing that and I shouldn't have yellowed in. And that's where it became a 3v1, 3v1, 3v1. So a lot of mistakes there. Unfortunately, I, P Pars couldn't find a gun. I pushed in too early to assist, which is the mistake there. And it really made us fall apart. This is also a short round. This is a 50-50 as well. The, the crux of the matter here is don't 50-50. I think we just wanted to hard stick our landing spots that we're used to. Like we're used to estates and we're used to this other spot. That'll probably change. We'll probably land in other spots in general. Try more things out. But nonetheless, this was this is pretty rough. Let's see what happened here. Oh, we decided to go grow towers. We didn't get 50-50. Okay, I was wrong about that. So this is, this is where I, I should have said something here. I realize it now looking at this. Every time we fight this angle and we fight from up top, they have the power play. This is not the power play, but you know what's weird? It feels like this is an optimal spot because the reason why it feels like it's so optimal is because you should be able to run up after you get some initial damage on, right? So let's see how we cut this corner. I grab that bat and then we go in. I guess this was fine. This isn't... We're fighting from low ground and we're having to crawl up and we really need some entry damage. So unfortunately, it gets damaged. I lose track of this guy. I do little damage. Could have fried him a bit better. Maybe hit two or three more shots. But it's not like that's going to make a massive difference in this gunfight. We're at a disadvantage because they have purples and we're all at uh, blues. I'm dodging nades here. I don't know where the enemy's at. There is a bubble, which is good. He rolls up. I almost fry him. Do I get... Oh, dude, so close. They just had the overall positioning on us. Which is weird. Fighting at Grow Towers and why... I need to figure out how to play here better because honestly what's weird is you think that pushing up on them that you have the advantage but if they have the floor above you technically they have height so I was getting hit by some guy over on the stairs over there and we look at this here once they roll up they have all the angles to come out at us it's like being stuck in a building with no cover so of course we both went down and I mean I landed as much shots as I could I felt my accuracy was fine it wasn't necessarily my aim but unfortunately, even with Pars here, at this point, he gets completely overwhelmed naturally because there's three different people running around and they have the jump. So what we would learn here is realistically, it's hard to push grow towers and not to fight because all they have to do is just go up one more flight and now they have height on you. So I guess it's a lesson learned there. And the last one, this is the one where we, uh, no, there was not even, uh, that was literally it. Okay. I thought that was around six, but there's no extra round. And guess what? I think my graphics card is here. I just did a pub just to kind of like put the edge off. So, you know, here's the lesson. Here's a lesson now that we're here. This was five rounds of just some of it. You can say it was bad luck. If we recap, we look here, we had height. We just kind of got caught at a position and one of us got fried. It's just unfortunate. We just, I just need to play angles better. 
This one was a was not really the best port and that put us at a massive disadvantage there. This here, I pushed in too far on this one fight, like we discussed before, right? This is not the third party, the round is closing, or the zone is closing, we should have just ran in. We should have ran in for better positioning. Always fight for the better positioning, it doesn't make any sense not to do so. And then we look here. Uh, once pars got knocked, and we saw where they landed, I should have taken this much slower. I don't know if we would have gotten this, but it still would have been difficult. And then, of course, the last run of the day. This is where we decided to call it quits and take a step back and realize, you know what? Maybe this just isn't our day. Let's recoup. And honestly, putting this video together has been very, uh, very, an insightful look to see what went right and what went wrong overall in the overall gunfight. So we look and we say, you know what? Poner stepped away, Parzilla stepped away, and we took a step back. And then I get to review the footage here today, and we're all good players, we know what we're doing. What you saw was some minimal mistakes, but those minimal mistakes are massive into making the right decision and performing well. So yeah, leave a like if you found this helpful. It was helpful for me as an exercise to go through this. And it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but in the reality, it, it kind of is. These mistakes, while would seem super small because you're like well, why didn't it really miss and they're above us how do we win this better positioning no amount of aim training is going to fix this so this is straight up just positioning comms and knowing where to push i feel like as a team we're more confident world's edge we're still figuring out where and when to push like i don't really know if you really can ever push grow towers with the positioning that's offered because although otherwise are always above you and then you have literally nowhere to play here looking at this i never realized just how poor poorly positioning wise like there's just nowhere to go which is very, very difficult. It's always a, the advantage to be on the upper upper angles. But again, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Hopefully I didn't ramble. Hopefully like just looking at this sitting next to each other and explaining it really, really helps you get some insight. So again, I appreciate you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.